hurt. Uh, uh, there was a girl in my college. I had a cross on that. I had just like that. Hey, everybody, what's up here to you? And welcome back to this place with Team 2 Octo Expanse. And before we move onward, I gotta say, these tunnels and subway systems, they freaking suck. I don't like going on a subway to begin with, but when you're going through a tunnel like this where it's all like crammed in and dark with occasional lights flashing by on a train that rocks back and forth with people crowding everywhere, uh, it's I don't like that feeling. But anyway, on a happier note, welcome back to Octo Expansion. In today's video, we'll be going through who you're gonna call Target Buster! I love this level! <laughs> I love this level! Please destroy all the target crates before time runs out. Good luck! Alrighty then, so let's go over this way. And admire the background once again because there's ring pops everywhere and I loved ring pops when I was a kid. More so than actually eating the ring pop. Wow, that was bad. <laughs> More so than actually um, eating the ring pop, I like to chew on the part that the candy was part of. I don't know if anybody else felt like that uh, when they were a kid, and that's probably why I have buck teeth. But anyway, in today's episode, we're going through this way. What we want to do next is use uh, the curling bomb to go this way, and bounce over here! Bounce, bounce, nothing gonna bring me down. Bounce, bounce, stay down, bounce. Means we're going over here to destroy other box and nothing else rhymes with box. Mash, 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 try! Best try! All shall be me! Why am I singing in this episode? <laughs> Splatoon 2, the musical! Apparently they're turning the Mean Girls musical into a movie, but that was already... The musical was already based on a movie, which was based on a book. It's it's weird. <laughs> Alright, what's next? Nope. Nope. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, 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 no. We are waiting on that one. <laughs> We're doing this one instead. The other level doesn't exist. <laughs> watch out now. Ink and watch Stason. There's a reason why I'm putting off that level. I'm just going to say that right now. <laughs> But anyway, moving on to Ink and Watch Station. I don't think I need to tell you what this level's name is based off. So the movement crates, I'm trying not to waste an ink while doing stuff. Uh, we'll get started once you've jumped in. Destroying the target crates, so we'll get rid of the Octo Watchers too. And just in case you need me to tell you what this level's name is based off, we can see some Game Boy Watch consoles in the background. That's pretty fun. I never actually owned a Game & Watch system myself, but I would love to someday. Alright, let's take care of that. And we're gonna go this way. So, the basic idea with this level is that you need to destroy all the boxes while you only have a certain amount of ink, and we're dead. <laughs> I love the concept of this level, but I'm not very good at it, so this may take a couple tries. Alright, let's take care of that guy, go this way, and head over here. The nice thing about this level is that you don't have time during them like that, so technically speaking, you can take as much time as you want. But just keep in mind that you only have so much ink. And this one here is particularly going to be a big uh, ink eater. If that's a term that the cool kids use, which I don't think it is. But anyway, so the basic strategy with this part is wait for the box to come towards you, and then do the jumping attack. Alright. There's only two more left, and we should be able to do this with no rap music or fast dancing. And we did it! Test passed. Alright, so that's going to be it for this episode's portion of Octo Expansion, so I'm going to meet you guys in the imaginary land of alternate save file. Also, I still love the sound these things make when you bump into them. They're <laughs> just so cute.
Hello, lovely people, and welcome back to the imaginary land of alternate save file. We are back where we began with Gobby Arena. I believe this was the first match that we saw during this let's play. And we were playing on Rainmaker. So we get an awesome stage with a mode that is awesome half the time. <laughs> but now we're playing it through Gobby Arena, and I've said that before, so I don't know why I'm repeating myself. Let's just get it right into the weapons we'll be talking about in this video. We're going to be talking about my favorite weapon in the entire game, the Slosher. If you want to know how much I love this weapon, literally everything, all that I wrote in my notes for this let's play describing the actual weapon is, and I quote, THE BEST WEAPON IN THE ENTIRE GAME! <laughs> but yeah, let's talk about the Slosher. This is my absolute favorite weapon in the entirety of Splatoon. It is so freaking awesome. I love being able to splat things in the bucket. <laughs> So, how Slosher works, uh, uh, enough about uh, fanboying over this thing, the Slosher, how it actually works is that it fires a, it fires a trail of ink uh, in an arch. And unlike other weapons, this one actually deals more damage depending on how far away the opponent is. So that's something that's pretty nice. And the arch of it can also go over walls and the shield of Umbrella. So this thing is really good. I really love Slosher weapons. They are my absolute favorite weapon class in the entirety of Splatoon. There's a big reason why I fanboy over this thing every single time that I use a Slosher. <laughs> I haven't been using them a whole lot during the online matches uh, the past couple episodes uh, because I would like to have better variety of weapons um, showcased in these videos. I kind of wish James would do that too, but he's been using a blah 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 for every single match we've been recording so far and I can't seem to convince him otherwise, but whatever. <laughs> There are four versions of a traditional Slosher. There's the regular version, which comes with a Sexton Bomb and a Tenta Missile on up to level 5. And there's a Slosher Deco, which comes with a Sprinkler and a Baller on up to level 8. The Soda Slosher comes with a Splat Bomb and a Burst Bomb Launcher on up to level 16. And the Hero Slosher Replica is unlocked at level 5, but you also need to complete every stage in Octo Canyon with the Hero Slosher to be able to use this one. There's not much of a difference between a Hero Slosher Replica and a traditional one. It has the same sub and special weapons, being the Sexum Bomb and Tento Missile. But it's just there for bragging rights, because who doesn't love a Slosher? <laughs> so, the unfortunate thing about Sloshers in this game is that in the first game, they were paired with my favorite of the sub weapons, the Burst Bomb. Unfortunately, that's no longer the case. At least not for a traditional Slosher. The thing with the Slosher and Burst Bomb combination was that this was an absolutely mean combination if you knew what you were doing. Because having a Slosher attack right after throwing a Burst Bomb at somebody's face would cause them to splat faster than they could even react. So this was a very mean setup for getting very easy splats. But of course, if you know what you're doing, you could probably figure out a way to get around this and be careful and things like that. But again, this is a very dangerous combination, which is probably why the Slosher no longer has a Burst Bomb and now has a Sexum Bomb. So I kind of, it's kind of unfortunate in that department because Burst Bomb was my favorite in the first game. And unfortunately, not a whole lot of weapons that I use in this game use a Burst Bomb. But the Sexum Bomb is also a pretty great weapon too. It's great for trapping opponents and uh, baiting them into trying to go away from somewhere for, and then you can sneak around them and things like that. So it's a pretty good weapon all around, even if I prefer the Burst Bomb. The second weapon we're talking about in today's video is the Tri-Slosher. Now this one is a bit weird because I probably could get more into this weapon if I tried, but I just love the original Slosher so much that I honestly just don't want to try another one. Um, I've tried using the other Slosher's before, but there's only ever really been one that I've really cared about. We'll be talking about that in the next episode. But the tri Slosher, how this one works is that it fires ink in three directions, but and also has a fire firing rate as well, so you can fire this one much quicker than a traditional Slosher, which can make it pretty dangerous if you know what you're doing. But it also has less damage output, so a regular Slosher could probably take out an inkling in two or three shots if you know what you're doing. A tri Slosher isn't quite that way. And that's, of course, we're able to get all three um, attacks from a tri Slosher to hit at the same time. But that's probably not going to be the case because it's a little bit hard to aim with the thing. But if you're going purely for spreading the ink around, this is probably a great weapon for you. But 
There are two versions of a tri -Slosher. The regular version comes with a burst bomb and an ink armor on up to level 15, and then there's the tri Novu, Novu, which comes with a splat bomb and an ink storm on up to level 17. So this is what I mean when I say that the Slosher kind of doesn't have the burst bomb anymore. The traditional one doesn't anymore, but the traditional tri -Slosher does. Unfortunately, because of the way that the tri attacks opponents, it's not really all that possible to do the Burst Bomb Splat Charger. Not Splat Charger. It's probably not that possible to do that combination attack where you can throw a Burst Bomb at somebody's face and then finish them off with a Slosher attack. Because of the way the tri works, that's probably not possible anymore, which is a bit unfortunate. Next up, we got Piranha Pit on Clam Blitz, and I have been waiting to use this footage since I recorded it a few days ago. <laughs> oh man, this stage, I'm not going to spoil anything, but this may very well be one of my favorite matches that we've seen in this Let's Play. There was another Clam Blitz match, which I was also pretty proud of, but again, I'm not going to spoil anything because you can just see it for yourself. <laughs> Something kind of funny about recording these videos is that James has been helping me out with a lot of this footage because I don't really have a whole lot of time to sit down and wait for specific stages to become available normally because I'm a boring college student with boring grown-up responsibilities, so I have to do it like this. And by the way, I gotta say, huge shout out to the James Rolls for helping me with this because this is a very crazy idea to show off every single stage in every mode, so I really do appreciate you helping me out with this. So going back to the fun story, something kind of funny was that whenever we record the footage for this, I'm usually always complaining about Tower Patrol, and he's always complaining about Clam Blitz, because he doesn't really care that much for Clam Blitz that much. And I can understand why, it is a very strategic uh, mode, more so than any other stage, in, any other mode in the game. So this is definitely one that can get very intimidating very fast. but. If you know what you're doing, Clam Blitz is a lot of fun. This is easily my favorite of the ranked battle modes in the entire game. And I especially love it on Piranha Pit because of reasons that we've somewhat seen already but haven't done a whole lot yet. So the nice thing about Piranha Pit is that most of the clams are usually scattered within the same relative area. They're not really all that spread out too much, which is a little bit weird considering the fact that this is a very big and open stage. But the thing about this uh, stage in particular when you're playing on Clam Blitz is uh, this one, when you're playing by yourself like I am right now for this match, you can throw a football closer to the basket and chances are there's always going to be a clam right next to you that you can, that you can quickly go to and uh, pick up uh, some more clams to throw into the basket to make, the to make it open longer. There aren't really a whole lot of other stages that allow this. The only one that I can really think of off the top of my head will probably be Moray Towers, but that's probably not the best example that I can think of for what I'm talking about. But we're seeing it right here anyway, so I don't really need to explain anything right now. And I sacrifice my life for clams. I regret nothing. <laughs> yeah, but. Yeah, those are all the weapons we'll be talking about in today's video. Next time, we're going to be talking about the Sloshing Machine and the Blah Blah Blur. So, the way that I figured is that if we talk about two groups of weapons uh, for every Octo Expansion episode going forward, then we should be able to talk about every single weapon in the entire game before we're finished with Octo Expansion. And that's my goal with this series because that's kind of what I was hoping for at the beginning, how the traditional the traditional online modes during Octo Canyon would be a bit more of a natural experience where you'd see my live commentary reactions throughout the stage um, during the gameplay and during Octo Expansion this would be the time where we'd be going over weapon bios and things like that. And also it was a little bit weird trying to do research on this because I, every single time that I was researching a weapon before actually recording this let's play, there was a part of me that wanted to go super in-depth into all these weapons and give you the exact statistics of everything. But, as I said earlier in the let's play, this game still gets updates occasionally. There's supposed to be another one coming out in April of this year, at the time that I'm recording this video. I don't know what's going to happen during that update or anything like that. But... This is a game that can get an update at any time, which can make uh, anything that I say completely irrelevant if I were to go into super in-depth details. Which is the reason why I'm only really giving basic information and hints and uh, strategies for the weapons that can apply no matter what happens in an update. 
All right, so there's not really a whole lot of to talk about for the actual game, so I'm going to take this time to explain a bit of a fun story that's going to seem super um, off-topic, but this is something that was really fun that I just really want to talk about. So, this term in college, I'm in an acting class, and something happened today that made me feel super old. <laughs> so, yeah, there is a, my group of co-actors who are working on the same 10-minute play that I am, uh, we were talking about social media stuff, and two of the girls were talking about a thing called TikTok and things like that. And prior to this point, whenever I heard of TikTok, I always thought it was a Kesha reference. But then I saw some other group of girls over recording a TikTok video right before class started. So I asked uh, the lady in my group what TikTok was, and the other one is all like, Well, TikTok is kind of like Vine. You remember Vine, right? And I had never heard of it at this point in time, so they were pretty shocked that I'd never heard of Vine before, and so they loudly exclaimed, You'd never heard of Vine before? And then, not even joking, literally everybody in the auditorium, there was like 10 people in there, everybody in the auditorium was staring deep into my soul, and one of them even outright asked, um, How are you alive? Uh, I have a lot of fond memories of the acting class, but that one's definitely going to be one of the highlights So whenever I think back on this class. But that's going to be it for this episode of Splatoon 2 Octo Expansion. So thank you all so much for watching this video, and next time, Lady Gear to you. Oh yeah!